Assalamualaikum and good greetings. So today we will be going through some discussion with regard to uh, certain verses from the Quran, and we will begin with this comment right here. It started with this comment. I have seen your YouTube video link that you mentioned in your comment. You are a very tricky man, and I have seen a lot of dawah preachers like you. Well, please explain. And then he brought this verse. So we will be focusing on this verse. But before that, just for context, because he said, I have seen your YouTube videos because previously he asked for a different verse. Excuse me, brother. I do not know anything about Islam, question mark. But please be honest. Who do you mean by this verse? Please explain. And then he's brought this verse, uh, Surah At-Tawbah, which is Surah number 9, verse 29. And I have mentioned here as a reply. On verse 929, maybe you can have a look at what I have stated about the verse here. I put the link here because I have covered as a response about this particular verse from, you know, sometime in the past where someone actually brought up this particular verse. And perhaps afterwards, if there is something further that needs to be elaborated, you can specify. So I have given the link to address this verse and then suddenly he said, he, I'm not sure why, he just simply said, you are a very tricky man. Maybe he do not know what else to ask about that verse. So he suddenly jumped into this verse. So we'll focus on this. Surah Al-Fatiha, verse number 7. This is the seventh ayah of the surah, i.e. Surah Al-Fatiha. You Muslims have been reciting Surah Al-Fatiha five times a day, called namaz for the last 1400 years. So actually, we didn't recite five times a day. We make the prayer five times a day. Um, so a total number of um, you know this verse that we recited is like I think 17 times at, at least right here the term anger refer to Jews and the term astray refer to Christians this verse truly means Muslims are blessed and Jews uh, slash Christians are cursed you Muslim believe that this verse is from the creator my question is if this verse is from the creator why do Jews and Christians exist today question mark Muslim armies such as Hamas, Al-Qaeda, ISIS, Taliban do their best effort to eliminate Israel and Christian countries from earth. But Israel and Christian countries exist as a powerful nation today. Why? So it is a quite an interesting question. Firstly, I'm not sure I'm not sure how the verse relates to the question. So first to put in context, especially for those who are not familiar with this verse, let's take a look at that verse first. So this is Quran.com. We can go to Surah Al-Fatiha, Surah number 1. And he highlighted uh, the seventh verse, which is the last verse of the, the Surah, right? Surah, A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitan Rajim. Surah Al-Lazina An'amta Alayhim Ghayril Maghdubi Alayhim Waladhalin. The path that uh, of those who has been bestowed favors onto them and not those who have earned um, your wrath or your anger on them and not those who have gone astray so suddenly past what what is this about it's actually a continuation from the previous verse which is mustaqim. this two verse is actually one single pray or one single dua one single thing that we ask we request from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala which is ihdina guide us as surat al mustaqim to the path okay surat is path mustaqim is the straight okay so of course in terms of the grammar the arrangement is different in between english and arabic right so guide us to the straight path if you want to translate become like this right okay guide us to the straight path the path that is of the path that um the people that you have given ni'mah or favors upon them and not those who have gained your anger upon them and not to ha uh, those who uh, have gone astray right so that's simply the verse so it's actually us muslim um, making dua making prayer asking allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to show us to guide us the, uh, to the straight path what is the straight path the path of those who have gained ni'mah upon them and not those who have gained anger upon them and not those who have gone astray uh, we are reciting it as a practice to 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 make dua to ask allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to show us the right path we do not want to be uh, you know having the same path as those who have gained the anger of allah 
or those who have gone astray. Now, if you read uh, the tafsir, if you read uh, commentaries about uh, this verse, this in some tafsir uh, is being related, uh, you know, this, the primary example from the Quran of those who have gained anger is uh, the Bani Israel of the past that have, you know, disobey and that have rejected um, from following the prophets uh, even after they have seen the truth. Hence, they have gained the anger of Allah Almighty. Uh, the primary example related to uh, those who have gained anger or wrath of Allah is, you know, the, the Bani Israel of the past. Based on this dua, we are not saying that this is specifically them. We are saying that we do not want to follow the, the path of those people. Right? The primary example in the Quran, Allah keep reminding us that some people uh, from the Bani Israel of the past actually have done that crime. Even if, even after the truth is being proven to them, they still reject, they still rebel and hence they gain the anger. The another category that we make dua, we pray that we will not follow those paths is those who have gone astray. What does it mean by going astray? One of it is you actually thought that you are on the right path when you are not, when you are actually already on the falsehood. But you actually think it is the truth, right? Hence, it is uh, normally in many tafsir, it is related to the, the Nasara. Right? So normally this is al Yahud, normally we translate as Jews, and al Nasara, normally we translate as Christians. The Nasara or the Christians that actually thought that they are upon the truth when it is actually a falsehood. Right? They actually sincerely thought that Jesus is God, for example, when Jesus is a prophet and not a God. So that is how we understand going astray. So in this dua, in this prayer, when we ask from Allah, we do not want to be upon the path that those who even know, despite we know the truth, we still reject it or we still rebel. We also do not want to become someone that actually uh, have a straight to the falsehood while thinking we are upon the truth. Going back to the comment, here is my reply. Tricky man, what do you mean by that? Okay, that's for the first part. Okay. On verse 17, which is Surah Al-Fatiha verse 7, the word maghdub, those that are angered upon, and dalin, those who are astray, are more general than Jews and Christians. But of course, you can find certain tafsir and elaboration that link maghdub to the Yahud and Jews based on what they have done, especially towards the prophets and messengers of Allah, which invite the anger of Allah from doing the crime despite knowing the truth. While Dalin was linked to the Nasara or Christians as they sincerely think they are in the right path, but unfortunately is not hence astray. Both those links are based on what was established in the people of the past and what they have done as well as the choice they have made. If anyone repeats such traits, they can be part of those maghdub or angered upon and dalin, those who go astray. For instance, if a Muslim know the truth yet committed a crime despite knowing the truth, they can fall into those angered upon. Or, if a Muslim is not careful with the information they accept, do not evaluate and check or to check whether it is indeed the truth, they can fall into being astray. Which is why we make that dua to Allah to show us the right path. Begin with the verse 6 from Surah Al-Fatiha. And not to fall into the path of those who are angered upon or astray. Which is verse 7. We have seen that those verses earlier, right? Not sure how the verse above is related to what you said. Means Muslim are blessed and Jews, Christian are cursed. So this is a quote from his comment. Also not sure why you ask. If this verse is from the Creator... Why do Jews and Christians exist today? Perhaps it is based on a mis misunderstanding of the verse. Hopefully, with the explanation above, it cleared up things. By the way, when you say the five daily prayer is called namaz, are you in Pakistan or no Muslim from Pakistan? Question mark. I think that is a Pakistani word, if I'm not mistaken. Of course, if you know this, please verify. 
Uh, I think it is, it is a Pakistani word. I'm not sure whether it's Indian or something. If I'm mistaken, please do mention. I have never heard of it until when I have discussion with people online. And that is the first time I knew that the five daily prayer, uh, the Arabic word used in the Quran and Hadith. Uh, so, okay, five daily salah, right? So, in, in the Quran or in the Hadith, uh, we normally call it salah. And as a Muslim in Malaysia, normally we call it salah. But uh, the first time I know that it is also called namaz by some Muslim in certain part of the world. If I'm not mistaken, in Pakistan. So, that was my comment. And then he actually commented, which to, to which I reply, which verse are you referring to when you say Jews are cursed by Allah? Now, his comment is, I, I only realize it now, his comment actually is missing. But he actually mentioned this. I think later on he realized something that he deleted that comment. But in the email, uh, I still can see this comment, right? Because he can delete it in, in YouTube, but the not email notification, it is still there. So he said, if Jews are hated and cursed by Allah, then why do ex Israel exist as a powerful nation today? So he actually mentioned this. If Jews are hated and cursed by Allah, that is his premise. And then this is the question. Why is Israel exists and powerful nation? So I'm curious about this word cursed. Oops, sorry. This word cursed. Right? Where did he get the idea of the word cursed? So hence I ask. Which verse are you referring to when you say Jews are cursed by Allah? So, then he said, just one doubt. Please give an appropriate answer to my question. Please do not change the topic and escape. So, I'm not sure why he said this, uh, to which I, I replied afterwards. My question is that, if Allah and Muhammad hates the Jews for not converting to Islam, so suddenly the, the question changed, changed. Then why do Israel exist as a powerful nation today? Then this is my repeat, uh, question. Why did you say about changing the topic when my comment is exactly about the topic or the question you asked? You specifically stated that Jews are cursed by Allah. So I'm not sure after this, perhaps he deleted the earlier comment, his earlier comment because I emphasized that I did not change the topic. I actually, I actually go to his specific word that he used. Right, so you specifically stated that Jews are cursed by Allah, which become the premise of the question as to why Israel exists and powerful. I have not come across verse that indicate that Jews are cursed as you said. Hence, I ask about the verse. If there is no verse about the Jews are being cursed, then the question about how come Israel exists and powerful would not arise at all, right? Okay. And then I just add another elaboration. If the verse simply state about the Jews got the anger of Allah, even if, you know, uh, there's any verse that specifically say that Allah is angered to the Yahud, then if they don't repent until they die, they will be punished in hell. In a hadith, Prophet Muhammad wasallam stated that if this world is of any value, Allah would not even let those that reject him to even drink a sip of water from this world. But given that this world have no value to Allah, is only temporary and a place of test, Allah simply let those that reject him to gain as much wealth, power, etc. from this world. Even if Jews or anyone uh, that Allah angered upon, they will be punished in hell. But uh, on this dunya, on, in this world, they can gain any anything given that this world have no value and only temporary place of test, he let anyone who want to gain as much of anything from this world, no problem. So that's my question. Where do he, he get this? And then he said, I repeat, why only native Saudi Muslim exist in overall Saudi Arabia? Where are the Saudi Christian, Saudi tribes that exist 14,000 years back? So, okay. It ended here with my, my comment. Given that you accuse me of propagate lies, can you please pinpoint what lies that I have made in my comment? So that is 10 hours ago. Maybe you are, you are, you are confused. Why is this? But I only realized after that that he actually uh, deleted one more of his comment. So which is this one. Right. So after I have replied that, he said, you are a well-trained dakwah preacher. I'm not sure why he get this idea. Uh, I'm not trained at all. I'm just a normal practicing Muslim. Anyway, you propagate lies. Okay, so this is his comment. 
you propagate lies in a very sophisticated manner. Okay, so this is his comment. Uh, you propagate lies in a very sophi sophisticated manner. Before going to anything else, because he specifically mentioned this accusation, hence I replied. Given that you accuse me of propagating lies, can you pinpoint what lies I have made in my comment? And to that, he have not yet um, replied. Right, so um, that's where we are now. Um, I hope anyone who is watching this is clear about you know the answer to his question about this verse to begin with um, from the Surah Al-Fatiha, uh, the context, the proper context. And then whatever he comment afterwards, at least, you know, um, yeah, uh, I hope that is of benefit as well. So uh, anyway, so this is the end of this video. By the way, if um, you are wondering why the video is in this format, if you have watched the previous video before this, uh, you would realize that my camera, my video camera, is having a, a little problem with the, the focusing of the lens hence until i get that rectified i have to find some some other mode or some other you know uh, way of, of of making content hence this is just my voice with my my computer screen uh, hopefully it is still something that of interest of some of you at least so with that thank you for watching see you next time